everyone. Welcome to this episode of Super Dwarf Sunday. Today is Sunday, September 6, 2020. I am Lori with Behavior Education, and this is TC from Reach Out Reptiles. TC has been quite active since our last episode, and his activity level has continued to increase since turning one year old about three months ago. TC not only seeks to come out of his enclosure on a daily basis, except during his ecdesis cycle, to explore his room, he's now started to leave his room to roam around the room next to it. I have lots of photos and video of his meanderings to share with you this week. Tau Seti's daily outings prompted me to investigate just how much reticulated pythons move around in the wild. Little did I know that this information would be difficult to find. Sit back and relax while I share what I found, and at the same time, you can enjoy watching some of Tau Seti's self-directed exploration and movement patterns in our home. Information on movement and activity patterns of reticulated pythons was pretty much non-existent. When I searched for GPS tracking and radio telemetry studies of reticulated pythons, several came up for Burmese pythons, but none for reticulated pythons. My research was very disheartening. I found it upsetting that as a culture, humans have spent a lot of time, research, and money to study the movement patterns, daily activity patterns, and range of Burmese pythons to better be able to hunt and eradicate them. And little to no research has been done regarding how much reticulated pythons, a species commonly kept as pets and who live in our homes with us as family members, move around in the wild and utilize their space. It's not much, but here's what I was able to find out. I started with a book I have at home, the two, seven and thousand book, Boas and Pythons of the World by Mark O'Shea. This book states that the reticulated python is distributed over a vast area, which includes parts of Southeast Asia, the Indo-Malay archipelago, and the islands between Asia and New Guinea, with some islands inhabited by dwarf populations, and is the only python recorded from the Philippines. It goes into detail, but suffice it to say they have a wide distribution. The following is quoted directly from the book. Reticulated pythons are excellent colonists, adept at crossing the straits between island groups. A reticulated python was the first snake recorded in the Krakatau Islands, only 22 years after a volcanic eruption extinguished all life there in 1883. Reticulated pythons are reported from sea level to over 1,500 meter altitudes, end quote. This implied to me that for populations of reticulated pythons to become so widely distributed that individual pythons must have been doing a lot of moving around and traveling. A peer-reviewed research article published in PLOS One in 2017 called Phylogeography of the Reticulated Python conservation implications for the world's most traded snake species by Murray Dixon et al. states that in regard to Maleo Python reticulatus, the species has excellent dispersal ability. A 2015 article from the Danau Girang Field Center in Sabah, Malaysia, outlined Cardiff University PhD candidate Richard Berger's proposal to study reticulated pythons to include their home range and movement patterns by surgically implanting them with GPS tags to track their movement over time to better understand the landscape level requirements of the species and establish conservation strategies. The article mentioned that only one other study had used GPS implants in large pythons to assess home range. Unfortunately, I was unable to find any published follow-up on this, so I don't know if Berger implemented his proposed study, collected any data on movement patterns, or published it. I have reached out to the Danau Gearing Field Center and to Richard Berger and will report if I hear anything back. In a document published by the IUCN in 2018 of case studies from around the world on reintroduction perspectives, an article by Mary Ruth Lowe titled Rescue, Rehabilitation, and Release of Reticulated Pythons in Singapore discussed work done to obtain home range sizes and movement patterns of translocated reticulated pythons. This was not the sole purpose of the study, but it's the part of the study that's relevant to our discussion here. 
All captured and released snakes involved in this project were tagged with a passive integrated transponder prior to being released. In addition to that, 28 reticulated pythons were tracked using radio telemetry from 2014 to 2016. Post monitoring found that snakes who were tagged seven years earlier had traveled up to 20 kilometers away from their original release locations. That's just over 12 and a half miles. Unfortunately, I was not able to find data on daily movement patterns or any published time budgets or activity budgets for wild reticulated pythons. Clearly, research is lacking in this area. I will, of course, cite the sources of information that I did find in the description of this video for those of you interested in reading them for yourselves. Based on the extensive distribution of reticulated pythons, including dwarf and super dwarf populations, the movement data that is recorded, and on the movement and activity level of our own reticulated python, Tau Ceti, it seems clear that this is not a sedentary species. Upon his initial arrival here, TC was content in his quarantine tub for less than a week before he started exhibiting stress behavior and stereotypies which included edging, pushing on the lid, and resistance to being put back in when he had been allowed out. He was moved within a week of his arrival to a four foot by 18 inch by 18 inch enclosure, at which time the stress behaviors and stereotypies immediately ceased. He is just about as long as his enclosure now, just under four feet, and he remains content in his enclosure during his inactive periods. During times when he is normally active, he initially swims in his swimming pool and utilizes all of the space and furnishings within his enclosure in a calm manner for quite a while, up to a few hours. And then he has started seeking to come out. This is happening more and more on a daily basis. Each time he comes out, he's increasing his roaming range. His climbing and boldness in traversing obstacles has increased as well. Following his exercise sessions and supervised freedom, Tau Ceti is calm, quiet, and content when returned to his enclosure. On days when I am not able to allow him out or when his time out has been too short, he paces at the front of his enclosure and pushes on the doors in an attempt to open them. He has been successful in letting himself out at least twice and for his safety, we've added security measures to his enclosure preventing him from opening the doors himself. He has developed a pattern of waking up in the early afternoons, swimming in his swimming pool, which is inside his enclosure, moving around his enclosure for a while, and then coming to the edge of the sliding door to be let out. When his enclosure is opened for him, he spends time exploring his own room and is now moving on after a while to the next room. Once he's finished his roaming, he climbs our snake tree to a particular spot where he sits for the evening until he starts to make his way back to his room or I put him away. Sometimes I have to put him away early when I can no longer supervise him. As long as his routine is not interrupted and he has allowed his freedom out of his enclosure, he is content and rests inside his normal habitat. I am always seeking knowledge and additional information. So if anyone has information regarding published research about movement patterns, distances traveled within a specific time frame, time budgets, activity budgets, or energy budgets for reticulated pythons, either in the wild or under captive management, please consider passing that along to me via email, the contact form on my website, or message me on Facebook or Instagram. I believe this kind of information can inform us as to how to better manage these animals under human care, including guiding us as to how much living space to provide them with and the amount and duration of exercise we should be giving them opportunities to engage in. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, please remember to always be kind and love your animals.